what's it look like when say Polaris contacts you and they have a new vehicle? What does that look like? They are you working off of a 3D CAD model assembly of the vehicle? Is that how you're getting this to fit? Depending on which uh, which which group, but uh, sometimes we actually log right into their product data management system and we we grab the vehicle model ourselves and and uh, we start designing and and uh, we come up with our exhaust design. Now it's it is to Polaris's tune spec. Like we don't do the the tune spec development. That's Polaris that does that. And we will support it. Explain the tune spec for so if you uh, you know a two stroke exhaust system where you have uh, tapered sections that those tapers the lengths diameters that, that comprise those tapers are critical, and uh, that's arrived at by Polaris. That's specified by Polaris or or any of the OEMs. They do that. We don't do that because we don't have their engines. Is their prototype engines at that point and and still changing? So we don't do that part. I um, envision the tune spec to be it's just straight in line a straight line, li- yeah, yep. in a straight line, right? So yeah, then, like a straight line schematic. Okay, they call so, it a one D drawing. So you have this straight line schematic of the exhaust, and then it's our job to route it into the vehicle and design the bracketing and design you know the the locations and. Spring hook location, all that kind of stuff. That's and you our would have to travel the suspension to uh, see how it's going to fit, or uh, in you, a vehicle. You can, yeah, you can, you can. Generally, it's not. Yeah, you'd have to be able to turn the steering, but generally the suspension doesn't. You're not in the way of the pi- exhaust pipe, but okay. yeah, you got to turn the steering. But you know, you just you make your space claim in there, and then somebody else comes along and says, "Oh, we need to put the oil tank there," and like, well, then you got to move your exhaust pipe or what, however that works. But but you go through this design, and then you you go through a, an, a uh, design review with with our, your customer, and it could, you know, it could be Polaris, Articat, you know, whoever. You go through the design review system, and then you you agree on a design. You have to iterate that a few times because they're not going to like it right out of the box. Otherwise, they don't feel like they're doing their job, you know. <laughs> so they so you go through a few design iterations, and then you start making prototypes for them, and you make fixtures to make sure the prototypes are, um, you know, you might three D print the fixtures or whatever, but you make these fixtures to capture the the uh, the, the specific routing. And you make cone pipes as as prototypes. So you're still making co- prototypes are still made as cone pipes. Cone pipes, yeah, by hand, right. super labor intensive. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, we've got it pretty dialed. I mean, we do one in a day, but you know, you build like one person can build a hundred of the exhaust systems, production exhaust systems a day. Well, one guy takes all day to build one pipe when you're doing cone pipes. It takes a long time, but it is a good way to get the tune spec right and get the routing right. So we'll, we'll do that. And then they'll iterate that because it, you know, they won't like the way it runs the first time right out of the box. They got to test, you know, they, a lot of the two stroke exhaust system tuning is really developed more than designed. So you have to, you have to iterate the design to make sure that it's right. And, and they test it and they iterate that a few times. And then, and then uh, once you have that established, then you go ahead and start, you know, doing all your production tooling and you, you do your production layout for them and, and share that with them, make sure everybody's on the same page. Yep. That's what we want. And then you start making all your production tooling. Then we're pretty fast at it, but it's still, you know, you're still a month and a half probably by the time you get a full, fully P-popped, uh, which is means everybody agrees on the measurements they ran it, it runs right. You know, they all agree on the, all everything that's, that it's coming out of the fixtures correctly. And then you do, are you at durability testing yet or do you still need to? No, at that point they start doing durability because they want to do durability on production tooled parts. So there's different levels, you know, there's, um, there's uh, like different level of pilot builds. You do a pilot build with three and it can be uh, production intent parts, but not full production. But, you know, at some point you're doing, 
a pilot of 20 and then you're doing those are all production processes it's production processes production tooling it's like this is how we're going to run them in full production and then they do durability on those if you make a little change you got to go through durability again you can't just make a change and oh this won't matter you go from a phillips head to a straight head screw they're going to want to go through durability again it's that tight yeah. right and that's the big difference going to af from aftermarket to oem supplier but you're still doing it in a month and a half uh so that's pretty fast but we're we're faster than most i mean probably because of our roots in the aftermarket industry we're it's like a hybrid now and you've taken so we're kind of trying to try to keep those good attributes and then build it into an oem that's what we're trying to be, right? We're trying to be the the uh, you know the speed of aftermarket, but yet the quality and the process control of OEM. That's that's where we're trying to position ourselves because you really do the the longer they can test into their development cycle, the longer they can iterate designs, the better the product they're going to have because because again, you know they're somewhat. Uh, developed more than designed. 